everybody, and welcome to the Supreme Decisions Legal Minute Podcast. Well, as you know, we've already got the sponsors out of the way, so today I'm going to do something that's a little bit different. And what I'm going to do is not necessarily teach. I'm going to do a little bit of ranting. And the reason I'm doing that is if you saw the title, and now I'm going to kind of give you the emphasis of that title because the title should be read as Apologize Why Citizens Don't Trust Police. And as everybody knows in the news, um, on yesterday, Justice Smollett um, had all the charges dropped against him. And the prosecutor basically agreed to him, you know, forfeiting his bond money, which was 10 grand and the community service that he was already doing as a service for the alleged allegations. Why? Because they had no real proof. And the reason why this video came up to me was because the mayor of Chicago, Rahm Emanuel, and the police superintendent, Eddie T. Johnson, asked for an apology to the city of Chicago for the Jesse Smollett incident because in their words justice was not served now here's the thing I speak constantly about this not being a system for justice they don't care about justice their entire thing is about generating revenue and mass incarceration for crimes that either don't exist or don't have an injured party. And at the same time, I'm only gonna speak about Chicago today. At the same time, there are murdering of thousands of uh, unarmed civilians per year. The police officers, the one that took the oath to raise their hand before God and everyone else to work as a public servant to serve and protect the citizens of Chicago are the same ones that are committing these murders and then blatantly lying about them in their reports. And then you ask for someone because you don't feel justice got was served or they got away with it and no one has yet to offer an apology for the things that have been going on in Chicago for years not just the city but also the police department and this is where I'm going to show you how they've earned the hate and I do mean this is this is a real thing. They've earned the treatment the way they have from the citizens. And here's why. Now, out of 435 police involved shootings since 2013, 92 persons have been killed by Chicago police officers. I'm gonna say that one more time. Out of 435 police involved shootings, 92 persons have been killed by Chicago police officers and over 170 others have been injured. Now, those 435 cases, more than 2,600 bullets have been fired by the police. 2,600 bullets fired by police. Now, here's where the where it's gonna kind of get skewed for you. And and I'm gonna bring that back because I want you to understand exactly what it is that I'm saying here. Four out of every five shootings, the target of these shootings were black males between the age of 25 and 40. Say that one more time. Four out of every five Chicago police officer shootings, the police officer's target was a black male between the ages of 25 and 40. These numbers did not come from me. 
These numbers came from the Chicago Police Department. You know, the one where Eddie T. Johnson is asking for an apology, the one that he runs. Now, more than 200 of the officers involved in these shootings were minorities. And what I mean by that are they're either black or Hispanic. So that still leaves 235 that were white, or as they put, Asian or Pacific Islander. Now, here's where it's gonna get kinda crazy. 435 police-involved shootings. 520 officers fired their weapons. And the craziest thing that caught my attention was 60 of them had been involved in multiple shootings. I'm gonna say that one more time. 60 had been involved in multiple shootings. And the crazier part about that was the numbers showed that officers that are more likely to shoot you have been on the force less than nine years. And it's really right after year five. That's when they really get antsy. Between year five and year nine, they are really trigger happy. For some reason, which also might actually explain during year five and year nine, you have at least 45% of domestic calls involving police officers. But again, we'll get into that later. Because right now, I'm just talking about Chicago. And since Eddie and Raheem wants an apology for Jesse Smollett and the actions that were done for him or against him, I wonder at the same time, did Laquan McDaniel get an apology from Eddie or Raheem because of the actions of Officer? Jason Van Dyke? Did Daquan Curry get an apology by the actions from Victor Rezo? Did Hazel Jones Huff, 92 years old, get an apology for being shot by an off-duty officer? Courtney Hill. Did they offer that same apology to the city of Chicago when Jeff Huff Jr., 86 years old, in the same incident with Hazel that was shot and killed by Courtney Hill. Did Eddie and Raheem get on the mic and have a press conference to offer them an apology? Did Ricardo Hayes, an autistic young man, because the thing is, I, I, I'm, I'm going to get deeper into this, but I want you to understand something. Ricardo Hayes, is autistic. He suffers from autism. This young man was literally skipping down the street. And I don't mean that in a technical sense. He was literally skipping down the street when Sergeant Khalil Muhammad asked him to stop and come towards him. And in a drive-by style shooting, by Sergeant Khalil Muhammad. He let off rounds at this autistic young man. And when you read into the text of most of the reports that were done on this incident, you hear the fact that, oh, Ricardo Hayes was a man. He was a man. Even in Sergeant Khalil Muhammad's report he gave several accounts I think we, we've come across that before you know down here in Texas with Amy you know Miss, Miss, Miss Geiger I think, yeah I think we remember her but Sergeant Khalil Muhammad yes he has a little rank 
he asked this young man who has autism to come towards him. This young man who had autism complied and he let off multiple rounds into this young man. He did not kill him, thank the Lord. However, he let off rounds while sitting in his car and this young man was complying. And the reason why I put that up is because this is what D.L. Hughley speaks about in his book, How Not to Get Shot and Other Advice from White Folks. Because you're gonna hear the reason they use the verbiage of man. Because I always tell you, words have power. Words have an exact meaning. Because right now, if you keep saying that this young man or this child, this mentally ill person, this man with learn this young man with learning disabilities. It is replaced with the word man. It becomes a different scenario. Now, here's the crazier part. The majority of these, because you know I always say 70% or higher of the videos do not come from police officers. Chicago is even higher. Because Sergeant Khalil Muhammad actually lied multiple times. This video came from a security camera in front of the house where this young man was shot at. He didn't have a weapon. He wasn't aggressive. He actually did what white folks tell you to do. Just do what the officer says. And the officer let off rounds because he complied. Now, Dio Hughley, his son suffers from autism. Dio Hughley also gives his son quote unquote the speech because the whole thing is when you have dark colored skin you have to give your child a speech to get home now even when you have these things present because I give my children the same exact advice if an adult talks to you for any reason you hand them my number why because you're a child you stay in the child's place let the adults talk because if I have an issue with a police officer, I'm not gonna go talk to another police officer. I'm gonna go talk to your parents. That's federal court judge. We're going to federal court. Because here's the thing, if you're doing the right thing, why are you lying? If you're doing the right thing, why are you afraid to be recorded? If you're doing the right thing, why is any of these other underhanded, deceivious, dis <laughs> deceitful acts being done if you are doing the right thing? thing because if you can't get up and do the right thing don't put on a uniform and this is why people are upset with the blue wall because we're not going to act like it doesn't exist these are great instances of their existence and why are their brethren not correcting these actions that's the only question I have if you are truly there to protect and serve from bad guys, and you see one of your brethren being a bad guy, if you're not gonna correct his behavior, why are you still going out and not snitching? Oh, you know, the thing that you tell people not to do. Oh, well you gotta go ahead and tell we'll protect you. Don't snitch. You tell the people not to snitch, but you hold that exact same code. You wanna talk about gang members but then you represent a flag on your shoulder. You know, the flags that the, the gang members wear, but it's wrong when they do it and it's okay when you do it. It's wrong if they don't tell on their brothers, but it's okay when you don't tell on yours. These are the issues people have. This is why the hate is earned. This is why when a, an apology is asked for by an official such as Eddie T or Raheem Emmanuel, where is yours? That's the question that I have. Because when you have officers murdering, because that's all that is, that is flat out murder. When you have a mentally ill person 
doing what you're asking them to do and you let off shots from a car, you are attempting murder. That is a gang style execution. If you are supposed to be the one that is our first line of protection, we should trust you. You should do things that make yourself trustworthy. Now, I'm gonna actually go a little deeper into that one because it didn't even stop there. Sergeant Khalil Muhammad is also being sued because, again, you remember he didn't have a videotape. He was in a police car, but he didn't have a video going because he was off duty. He didn't know about the, the security system video. So during the investigation, Isaac Lambert got a hold of the video with audio and a clear view of what had happened, which showed Sergeant Khalil Muhammad had flat out lied and attempted the murder of Ricardo Hayes. And I really don't remember, I don't remember Eddie T, superintendent of Chicago police or Raheem Emanuel, the mayor of Chicago, offering an apology for the actions of Khalil Muhammad to the people of Chicago or anybody. But this same Sergeant Khalil Muhammad flat out threatened. He threatened a fellow officer because he would not support his lie because there was an actual video that showed a flat out, what was the word I used earlier? Blatant lie. But he's a trustworthy person. He's somebody people should confide in. Now, I, I actually bring that up because I had a conversation yesterday with a young man on Facebook. Again, I, I need to stay off doing these dumbass comments. But the comment actually was with a friend of mine. She's a staunch Trump supporter. Now, the thing is, she still pushes the propaganda out, although she voted for him because of other reasons. She knows most of what he's saying is just to be on TV. It's just to get a rise out of people. It's just to say some dumb stuff. Right? But she actually believes he wants to put something together, and I have no problem with that because she can articulate it. So she put up something, but the fact that she put up something, it was about... President Trump being honest. So I asked her because she said our president is honest. So I asked her who pres whose president is she referring to? And the thing was, I gave a response of why I could not call President Trump an honest person. She gave me her version because apparently we have different dictionaries and definitely different Bibles. Because mine tells me what honest is. And apparently hers has a completely different definition. Well, in the midst of that, there was this young man that kind of jumped into our discussion. You know, which is technically okay because it's public. But he immediately went in on, I need to leave the country and I need to do this and I need to do that. And the problem is, you can't even come up with a reason why you think he's honest. You can't even come up with a reason why you think I should even leave, other than the fact that I don't agree with you. Now, here's the greatest thing about it. It didn't change my answer. It didn't change the facts, because everybody knows whenever I put something out, there's a reason I put it out. And at the same time, I'm going to back it up, because I don't go off of emotion most of the time. I, if I have an emotional response, I have a factual thing that backs that up most of the time. 
like today, today is just a rant. It's just a flat out rant because I look at it as the audacity to ask for something you're not willing to give. As a leader, as someone that is supposed to build structure, what type of structure are you building if these things are not being done by you? Both of them literally said, my opinion is, which I ha have no fault in that. Have no blame in that. Get your opinion out there. However, I don't remember a press conference being held to condemn these officers. I don't remember a press conference being held to apologize to the city of Chicago for the actions of your officers. Because what most people fail to realize as a leader, the actions of your subordinates reflect leadership. Which is why when you look at sports teams, and I'm going to get back on subject in a second. But when you look at most sports teams, and I'm a basketball guy, so I'm going to go with two of the easies. When you looked at a San Antonio basketball team, they're always in the midst of it. Right now, you probably can't think of very many San Antonio basketball players actively outside DeMar DeRozan and Lamar Aldridge. They're not super duper stars. But can you name me two guys from last season that actually played? Because Kawhi didn't, and they were still in the playoffs. Why? Because Popovich leads from the top down. The actions of his players reflect his leadership. Mike Krzyzewski, he's one of the few coaches, if I don't even think any other coach has it in college basketball, University of Duke basketball that has a, you coach until you feel like not coaching anymore. And outside of one or two players, he leads from the top down because this guy, all he does is win. And his players reflect Coach K. So when Eddie T. Johnson, Chicago police officer superintendent, asked for an apology from someone who he feels got off that paid 10 grand to get off that did community service to get off he's asking for an apology where's the apology for Laquan McDaniel Dewan Curry Hazel Jones Huff Joe Huff Jr Ricardo Hayes hell even to your subordinate, Isaac Lambert. Where are those public apologies? And Raheem Emanuel, and if I'm saying your name incorrectly, Mayor, I apologize, but you know who I'm talking to, Mayor of Chicago. You asked for an apology. Did you apologize publicly to Laquan McDaniel? Dewan Curry, Hazel Jones Huff, Joe Huff Jr., Ricardo Hayes, or any of the 92 other murdered families, of the other 170 families that had someone injured from your subordinates. If you're going to lead, if you're going to ask that, why don't you walk that? Why don't you give that? Now, I appreciate everybody today. That is all I got for right now. I love you guys. Keep supporting me. Keep downloading. And also, if you're on SoundCloud or one of the other channels and it's not Supreme Decisions Legal Minute Podcast, because I'm on several different platforms, but the problem is, they've switched me over from just Supreme Decisions for the the podcast to Supreme Decisions Legal Minute. Make that switch now. Get your downloads on. Get your listens on. And anybody that has a request, leave it in the comments. Send me a quick email. 
do something i want to hear from you guys and if you want to donate hit that donate button cash app google wallet apple pay do it i appreciate it because i'm also going to show you a video where we are growing and as you can see or most of you can hear we have a mic now so we're still growing we've got the tripods we got the better camera we're getting better software we've got multiple devices where as you can see i'm looking at several different screens if you're not watching it but you're listening we're growing and that's all because of you guys i love you until next time